So I know what it's like when you're first starting out in wood turning and you want to go out and you want to get all the gear and then you want to turn as many pieces as you can and there's a lot of stuff out there about how to turn and, and how to how to do things but one thing that I think is overlooked a lot is simply removing the tenon on bowls and and even even vases removing the tenon on vases and today I want to show you a really quick and easy method that you can turn the tenons off on your lathe using this piece here and your power head sander and a small bowl gouge. So let's get right into it. This is a big chunk of MDF and it's there's two pieces and that's you can see it's it's had its it's had better days, right? But it's covered in sponge. You could probably use some able flex that you see when people are concreting that sponge that comes in a big roll or anything you can put your hands on even old gym mats or something. Glue that down and then screw the MDF boards together or Another way to do it is pick yourself up a cheap face blade and screw some MDF board of that, a circular board with the sponge. What you want to do is present that up to the spindle, use your hand wheel and bring it on. Last minute, give that little, little snap at the end there, tighten her up, bring over your tool rest. And I always, when I'm finishing pieces, try and mark where the center is or leave that little indentation that you've made where center was last. Right. Put the tail stock on, hold the bowl by the tenon or however you feel comfortable doing it. Let's wind it out. And now I'm going to eyeball it up. So where my last little point was on the back of the tenon. And this is a cup center. Don't use your cone center because if you use your cone center, it'll pierce into the timber and keep driving it apart. The other thing is when you're doing this, and if that ever happens, go underneath. I need to adjust all mine and just tighten it up. So wind it away from you. So clockwise, clockwise. <laughs> That'll tighten that little wheel. There's a little wheel under there, both on the tail stock and on your banjo. And then you want to wind it up, but you don't want to wind it up too much after you've locked it off. Because what can happen, that'll, that can distort the shape of the rim on the bowl as it pushes into the sponge. You just want to bring it in there enough so that bowl isn't going to go anywhere. So after we're all set here, we're, we're all very, it's all very tight and close. I've just got my little 12mm uh, bowl gouge here. It's a 45 degree bevel with that heel removed. And then we're going to overgrass grip the gouge and we're just going to slowly work that tenon down. This isn't it, by the way. This is just a the start of the fun. Bring up the speed. It's about 700 RPMs there. And I'm just going to work that tenon down. And like I said, this piece isn't completely finished. And you can probably see I've hit that, I've hit that numerous times. Bowl gouge now faces, the flute faces away with me, support the back of the bevel or the back of the tool with my pinky. Turn the lathe off, get your ruler, and put your ruler over the back of the foot. And I know the tenon, the tenon is still there. We've got that little stub, that little stub still exists. But what I'm looking for here is if we've actually got some daylight underneath the ruler as it sits on the outermost edges of your foot of your bowl. So there needs to be daylight under here where the foot will be sitting on your table. So there isn't. So I need to take a little bit off. I'm gonna make that little cut again. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna drive in here, and then I'm gonna swing my body to the right a little bit so then the gouge digs in a little bit more, and then start swinging my hips back to the left as I flatten out. Let's get our ruler again. Beautiful, we've got daylight there. Sanding a little bit thin. At this point, you can add a little bit of decoration in there if you like, if you wanna trick it up a little bit. Just use your skew chisel, this is an inch skew. And I stand it up on end, it's probably not orthodox, but you know, make a little line, some cool little lines here, turn it on its, turn it on its side a little bit, the tip in there. 
trick it up however you want to do it. Doesn't you don't have to do this at all. I don't normally do it at all. I'm just showing you some other cool ways you can trick up the base of your bowl. Right. Now that's done. We take it off the lathe, and we've got this little stub here. We need to get rid of that little stub. So you're probably looking at all this gear and wondering, what am I gonna do with all that? Where do I need to go get all that? You don't need to go and get all this, but this just makes life easier when you're doing 20 to 30 bowls at a time and you gotta remove all the tenon. I did all this until I bought my vacuum chuck, which I now use to remove the tenons. This guy here is called a little cut sole wheel. It's one of the original ones, I believe, that came out. I got this off another wood turner, but you can go pick up those discs or even a flap disc that you see in automotive shops used for removing paint, real you know hard stuff. They've got all the little flaps all over them. They work wicked as well for sanding down timber, really quick and aggressive. Just get 40 grit, something super aggressive or 36 or whatever you can get. Damn it. It's my new case. Anyway, so, and this is an organizer for all my sandpaper. I've already got the sandpaper out that I need, and I got that at the local hardware store. As you can see, it's heavy duty because I'm like a bull in a china shop. Put that guy down there. You need your suction. I've got a polishing pad and my shallow wax cream that I'll put on afterwards. And we're going to use a power drill to sand it down because it's the most quickest aggressive way of doing it just to rip that tenon down and we'll be done with it. at 120 grit and the secret little trick to when you're signing your pieces are is to sort of drag the pen with you so i was inside editing and my massive melon is right in the camera view so i've just picked up this uh smaller dish here it's camphor laurel and i'm going to sign the back of it but just a few things that i want to talk about before i start signing is this is cheap. This is the cheapest thing that I could find. It's a $90, I believe it was, from uh, my local hardware shop, Bunnings, here in Australia. It's called a Trade Flame, and I've simply just tapped down the tip to make it a little bit flatter, because I like that little blade look. And before you start signing, just have the grain orientation running across like a notepad. So use the lines on the grain to guide you and help keep your lettering all in, in one plane, so to speak. So let's start signing. Just get yourself comfortable. So if you've ever seen people welding, they get their arm nice and out wide to where they're going to finish. Similar thing when you're turning. Put Position yourself so you're nice and sturdy. I've got my feet right out wide or, or be seating down. And I started signing before and the tip was a little bit off, so I went to bend it straight and then I've just snapped it in half. But this is just a nice little cheap set you can, and the tips don't cost much. So when you're signing, I, I tend to drag the tip through. So, and then I like doing these little curvatures to my, to my name when I'm, when I'm doing it. You can see there that it's starting to fade a little bit, so I might just need a little bit more heat or I should just slow down either way. So with the C, I have to come up and then drop it in like that. And then I'll write the, the date, so. And then when I start with the species name, I try and line it up. If it's a really long one like Camphor Laurel, I start it out a little bit outside my top name there. So it sort of centers within the top uh, lettering of whatever your, whatever your first and surname are. And then that way it looks centered on the piece. So I'll start over here.
Now there's two two choices here that we could make. We could uh, put a liquid on there. You could put Danish oil. I'm just going to use this uh, shell wax cream. I'm just going to whack it straight on. A little bit like that. I'm going to polish this. My actual polishing on there. Take that guy out. Put this guy in. Locked and loaded. Tighten it up. Put him on. Put another one on. This is just a towel to support it so it doesn't smash the face of your bowl or whatever piece of it. That is how to remove the tenon off your bowl. If you haven't seen my episode on how to mount your bowl, it's four different ways that professional wood turners use to mount and finish their bowls. Thanks very much, guys. I will talk to you all directly. Cheers.